everybody, it's Zimtex. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a really easy lure. This is one of the first lures I ever made. And it's one of these walk the dog lures. They're very simple to make, they're easy to fish, they're pretty effective. Um, and unfortunately it's kind of still winter here so it's not a great time to uh, actually try and catch a fish on one of these. But you can at least see what it looks like in the water. So stick around. basic design for a typical walk the dog lure, um, more commonly known as a spook, although that's a brand name. I've made a few of these lures in the past, and so um, I, I haven't ever recorded it, so that's why I'm coming back and doing them again. It's a very simple lure to make. Uh, I'm going to make this one out of poplar, uh, and I'm going to be using the lathe to turn this. Uh, I do have another video on turning your drill press into a lathe. Uh, and I'll put a link to it up here so that you can you can see that if you don't happen to have a lathe uh, But because I do have a lathe. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it on that uh, This is a five inch lure from end to end here and I've got three hook points on this particular lure It's a lot of hooks and then I've got my toe point right here My center of gravity is is approximately here it's slightly forward on this lure because there's more, you can see there's more mass at the, at the head end and we taper down at the end. So it's slightly forward uh, of the center of the lure. And what I'm going to do on that is I'm going to put my lead probably about a half an inch or so behind that. And that's what helps give it that walk the dog action. Now I plan on using twist wire for all of these connection points. And of course, this is where my eye location is. And uh, what I've done before that worked out pretty good is I actually will put a glass rattle in that uh, in that hole. I'm going to drill all the way through. Uh, I use a uh, four a four millimeter glass rattle, uh, and so I'm going to drill all the way through, and then I'll embed that rattle behind the eyes. This head end is going to do all this back and forth motion, so I want that I want that rattle oriented uh, side to side in there, so it'll it'll maximize the amount of noise it makes. If I orient it front to back, I may not get all that much rattle out of it. Like I said, I'm going to use poplar for this lure, and uh, I'm going to use this round. I think this is an inch and a half round poplar that I found at the store, the hardware store. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that for this lure, but you could also use this uh, 2x2 uh, poplar as well. It really doesn't matter. Um, I just think this round might be a little bit quicker for me because there's less material for me to have to shave off. This is a 5 inch lure, so I'm going to cut a 7 inch piece off uh, because I cannot, I cannot uh, use the lathe exactly at five inches uh, because of the way that the chucks uh, go into the end. So let's give ourselves a little bit extra there. We'll go to seven. That may be a little bit too much. I could probably get away with like six inches. Um, but for demonstration purposes and give myself plenty of room, I'm gonna go with seven.
So I've marked some points here that are transition points where I where I start to taper or I start start to round something. And so I've got one here at the head where I'm going to start rounding to the nose, and then I've got another one where I'm going to do a, a straight taper down to this skinnier part before I start making this bullet shape. But what I'm doing is I'm I'm using my parting tool to. Uh, get myself to the right size and then once I'm there it makes it easier for me to carve I just know that I don't need to go any deeper than what I've uh, made there Okay, I know from the first uh, batch of lures that I did a long time ago, I need a 3 8 inch Forstner bit to drill my lead ballast hole. For my hardware, um, I know that on this back one, let's measure it, we've got basically 0.7 inches. So I'm going to go 0.6 inches and that way I know that I'm not going to go too deep and drill through. So I've got that wire running right there and I got that wire running right there. I've got more room here to do a little bit longer on the front and the back. Yeah, one and a quarter. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's mark one and a quarter. Drilled all the way through so that I have a nice straight line. These are the rattles <laughs> that I'm going to use for this uh, particular lure. I'm only going to use one, but these are the four millimeter. Okay, the size drill bit I'm going to use for this is 1164, so which is just a little bit bigger than my rattle. For this size lure, I'm going to use the 0.041 stainless steel lock wire linked in the description below. I'm just going to get a piece about seven inches long. Probably ought to be about right.
I'm going to put some lead in here. I'm not going to go all the way to the top with this one uh, because you're wanting this to sit in the water with maybe a little bit of water just slightly coming over the tail. Um, so I don't need a whole lot in this one. I'm going to want to fill that in with a little bit of uh, super glue and some baking soda, but I want to let it cool a little bit longer. <laughs> so while I'm waiting on that, I'm going to go ahead and embed this glass rattle uh, into the eyes. But real quick, what I wanted to show you about the weight is uh, you should be able to just set it there and let it let it roll and it should sit upright. Which is a good thing. Another good benefit to having the weight near the tail is that when you cast it, ideally it'll it'll fly through the air a little bit like a bullet and keep your line pointed towards you. Um, if you got your weight in the front, it could potentially do this tumbling action and get your hooks caught in the line and all kinds of stuff. So that's one of the cool things about this design is is having the weight near the tail. It helps it cast a little bit, uh, but but also that's what helps it do this walk the dog action. The back of the lure is trying to catch up to the front of the lure. Let's put our glass rattle in. And I want to be sure and have it deep enough to where it's not going to interfere with my uh, eyes. And then I'm going to put a little super glue in there to try and set it into place if I can. Once it's tacked in, we'll put a little bit of this baking soda on a folded piece of paper. See how much rattle you get out of that? If I shake it back and front to back, you don't get nearly as much, but because it's gonna be walking the dog, you get a lot more rattle. Now when you're sanding on this, uh, after you've already sealed it, what you want to be careful to do is to not sand through that, that seal that you put on it. I'm just kind of smoothing up the surface is all I'm doing, so I'm, I'm really trying to not get beyond where that glue has penetrated. If you do, it's not the end of the world, you can, you can seal it again. I always leave my um, extra glue on the tape there and then I can come back and kind of see how how it's curing and and once it's done here I know it'll be done there okay I've waited a little while and this uh, epoxy looks cured here so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna try and smooth this out just a little bit and what I'm gonna use is some of this automotive uh, primer filler uh, because what it does is it's just a really thick primer and I can coat this thing and you can sand it you can get it a little bit smoother just just by using this
Well, we've got that dry. There's a few little uh, defects on there and I'm gonna sand that with some 400 grit sandpaper. Very, very fine. Just to kind of knock down the, the high points. We're gonna coat the entire thing with opaque white. Now that I've got a good white base coat on there, I'm gonna put a clear coat on the whole thing. Our clear coat has dried and I've got this taped off. I'll show you what I'm kind of going for here. This is a, this is a lure I made a few years ago and um, it's just a classic redhead pattern. On this one, I did a kind of a pearlized silver scale pattern on the back. I'm not gonna do that on this one. I want it to be a bright white. Anyway, uh, what I'm gonna do with this one is uh, I've got that V shape taped off. I've checked it and rechecked it to make sure it's straight and all that stuff. And I'm gonna paint that with uh, an opaque red. See what we've got here. So yeah, anyway, I, I'm wanting to keep this paint scheme very simple. It's a simple lure. Um, the idea behind this build is something that's pretty easy. Um, anybody could get started making lures. Um, this would be a good option. But uh, I caught a humongous bass on one of these. I was fishing um, out of my kayak actually, and there was a like a huge boulder out in the middle of a, a the end of a channel, and I was fishing that, and uh, like the first cast, this enormous bucket mouth comes up and just devours it, and uh, I was kind of dumbstruck when it happened, and so I wasn't. Uh, doing the best job I could that that fish swam down into a tree that was submerged and and broke off with the lure and everything it was still really exciting there we go so we got some nice sharp line there let's take a look at eyes here I think I'm gonna put these red ones on They look pretty cool. I'm gonna put a little dab of this Instacure onto the end of a stick here. And then I will transfer that to my lure. Now we're gonna get real professional and we're gonna put our water slide decal on there. Check out some of my other videos for more details on how I make these. But it's really simple. And uh, I've got all the products I use linked in the description below. So we'll just soak that in the water for a few seconds. And we'll dab each side. And we can slide that decal off. Carefully place it on our lure. And it's still got a bead of water under it so I can position it however I want. Make sure it's just right. Then I'll take a dry uh, Q-tip and I'll just roll the water out from under it.
Okay, I'm going to put it on the rotisserie and let it run overnight. If you like the content I'm putting out, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and give me a thumbs up so I can make more of the stuff you want to see. Also, feel free to leave a comment. I welcome your feedback and appreciate all of your support. Thanks again everyone for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.